Hello Orgo Pals! So today we are going to do kind of part two to the practice problems we started yesterday. We had too many of them, so um, we're recording them now for you guys to watch. So we're going to start off where we ended off yesterday, uh, which was aromaticity. So for this question, we are looking for the aromatic compound. We know it can't be this one because we have an sp3 carbon. Um, and we know it can't be this one because we have one radical, and that would mean it's five pi electrons, so it has to be non-aromatic. Now we have to decide between the cation and the anion, so we have two, four pi electrons, which would mean it's anti-aromatic, and just to double check, two, four, six pi electrons, that follows the four n plus two rule, so that would be correct. C will be our answer. Next up, we have a very similar problem, just a bigger ring. So automatically, we know that this cannot be the answer because that's an sp2 carbon. We also know that this cannot be aromatic because it has one radical. So those are both out. And this, we know we're going to treat it just like a carbocation. So we have two 4 pi electrons versus 6 pi electrons. We know that the correct answer has to be C again. So for this next one, it is saying what should be aromatic based on Huckel's rules. So first things first, we can kick out any answer choice that has sp3 carbons because we don't want that. And now if we go in order, the first answer is a cyclobutadiene. We know that has four pi electrons, and we don't want that. Next up, we have this anion. Again, there are four pi electrons, and we know that's anti-aromatic. Next up, we already did this one in the last problem. We know that it's cyclic planar fully conjugated and has six pi electrons, so this is aromatic. Next up, we have an eight-membered ring, and this one is um, one of those that you have to pay attention to for um, the planar rule because this could be non-planar. The way we decide is we count the number of electrons. So we have two, four, six, eight pi electrons. If it stays planar, it will end up being anti-aromatic. If it's non-planar, it will end up being non-aromatic. Either way, it's not going to be a correct answer for this problem, but we do know just for practice sake that it will end up being non-planar and non-aromatic because this is more stable than anti-aromatic. So moving on, we have this molecule. And we have to tell, we have to be able to tell whether the nitrogen is going to be sp2 or sp3. We know that if it's sp3, it will be non aromatic. If it's sp2, we will have two, four, six pi electrons. And we know that this will be aromatic. We know that aromatic is more stable than anti aromatic. So this ring will end up being aromatic, and the nitrogen is sp2. Next up, we have one of those eight-membered rings again, so we have to watch out for the planar, planar rule. Excuse me. So if it ends up being planar, we will have two, four, six, eight, ten pi electrons, and this does end up being aromatic. And we know that if it's non-planar, it would be non-aromatic. Planar and aromatic will be more stable, and that means this will be a correct answer. Last but not least, let's count up our electrons. Two, four, six pi electrons. It's cyclic, planar, and fully conjugated, so this is, uh, excuse me, this is aromatic. So our answer choice will be D. For this next one, we are again looking for our aromatic compounds. 
And we already said in the previous one that this will be anti-aromatic. We also said that this example, since it has SP3, will be non-aromatic. And for this carbocation, we see that there are two 4 pi electrons. So we know that this will also be anti-aromatic. Here we have an odd number of radicals, so we know it will be non-aromatic. So we're stuck with one last answer choice, but let's just double check that that's correct. We have two, four, six pi electrons, and we are cyclic, planar, and fully conjugated, so that checks out, and E is our correct answer. So for this next one, we are again looking for the aromatic compound. And as you guys can tell from these ones that we've covered, this is a very popular one. And so is this guy. And we've already done it a couple times, so we know that this is anti-aromatic because it is cyclic, planar, fully conjugated, and has four pi electrons. We also know that this one is non-aromatic because it has one radical, so it has um, an odd number of electrons. Now for the other ones, we can right off the bat see that this guy has an sp3 carbon, so he has to be non-aromatic. And for both of these last ones, we have ketones, and so we're going to pretend that that's a carbocation. So for number three, we have four pi electrons present, we know that's anti-aromatic. And for the last one, we see that we have two, four, six pi electrons present. So that one is our correct answer. He is aromatic. This next one is kind of fun and spicy because we have all these heteroatoms present now. And again, we are looking for the aromatic molecule. So... First of all, we can notice that all of these uh, 1 through 4 are single bonded. That's important. And we see that 5 is double bonded. And that might look scary at first because it's double bonded to an oxygen. We've never seen something like that. But no need to fear because there is an sp3 carbon right here. So right off the bat, we know that this has to be non-aromatic. We actually see the same problem here and here. We have sp3 carbons present, so we know that both of these answer choices are non-aromatic. So now we're stuck between 1 and 3. And what we have to notice here before we do anything is on one side we have a nitrogen, and on the other choice we have a boron. If we remember, the rule for boron is it's always sp2, but it does not donate any electrons. So this molecule will have two four pi electrons and it will end up being anti-aromatic. Here, the nitrogen can choose between sp2 and sp3. If it's sp3, it will always be non-aromatic, but if it's sp2, it will have six pi electrons and so it will be aromatic. We know that aromatic is more stable than non-aromatic, so this nitrogen will actually be sp2, and that will be our correct answer. And here we have more heteroatoms. So this is actually a very similar question because if we zoom out and take a look at these molecules, we've already seen this guy before. We know that because of this sp3 carbon, he is non-aromatic. We also have seen this guy, and we know he is also non-aromatic, and same with this last one, non-aromatic. And so we're stuck between 1 and 3 again, and if you guys look carefully, we pretty much have also seen number 3 already. This one has a boron with a methyl group. This one has a boron with a hydrogen. They are going to act exactly the same way. So we have two four pi electrons. Boron is always sp2 and donates zero electrons, so this will be anti-aromatic. And so now the last one we have to check is this guy. 
So we see that the nitrogen is double bonded. So nitrogen has to be sp2, and it does not donate this lone pair. We know that when it's double bonded, it only donates one single electron. And then we can see that the sulfur is single bonded, so it can either be sp2 or sp3. We know that if it's sp3, it will automatically be non-aromatic. If it's sp2, we will have two, four, six pi electrons, because remember, this one lone pair doesn't count. Heteroatoms that are single bonded can only donate up to one lone pair. And so we know that this will be aromatic. We know that aromatic is more stable than non-aromatic, so this sulfur will be sp2, and this ring will be aromatic. So A will be our correct answer. For this next one, we are actually looking for anti-aromatic. So please pay attention and read the questions carefully because you might have three uh, questions in a row looking for aromatic and then you see an anti-aromatic and you might get tripped up. So now let's shift gears. Well, we've already seen this guy a hundred times and we know that he is anti-aromatic because it's cyclic, planar, fully conjugated, and four pi electrons. But just to be safe, let's look at all the other ones really quick. This guy is just straight up benzene. We already know benzene is aromatic, so we kick that one out. Um, the last three guys standing all have 4n plus 2 pi electrons. As we can see, this first one has 2, 4, 6. This one has 2. And this one has 2, 4, 6 again. So we know that all three of these would be aromatic. So our only anti-aromatic compound would be C. Here's a, another one with a whole bunch of heteroatoms. So let's go through it. Remember that in number one's case, the nitrogen is double bonded, so we can pretend this lone pair doesn't exist. And we treat the nitrogen just like another double bonded carbon. So in this case, we have two, for six pi electrons, cyclic, planar, and fully conjugated, so this guy is aromatic. Next up, sulfur. We don't see that one. That wasn't in one of the rules I gave you. It actually was. It's going to be treated like any other heteroatom besides boron, so it'll act exactly like an oxygen. So sp2 would make it six pi electrons, which would mean aromatic. We already know if it's sp3, it will be non-aromatic. So sp2 is favorable, and this will be aromatic. Next up, we have the same exact ring with the nitrogen, and we know that the nitrogen and the sulfur will work exactly the same way. So we know that this is also aromatic. Next one up. Oxygen literally works exactly the same way, so we know that it is also aromatic. The last one, though, boron, does not work like all the other heteroatoms. And the reason for that is it is always sp2, but no pi electrons. So we have cyclic, planar, fully conjugated. We only have two, four pi electrons present. And that means this is anti-aromatic. So let's look at what the question is asking. It's saying, which one would you not expect to be aromatic? So we know that E is our correct answer. So for this next one, we are actually going to answer a different kind of question than the ones we've done previously. So it's saying, in which of the following cases, is the indicated unshared paired of electrons not a contributor to the pi aromatic system? So be very attentive to what this question is asking you. First of all, it's saying they are not a contributor to the pi system. 
And it's saying that it is indicating the unshared electrons. So all these drawn in electrons, they're not there just to trick you anymore. They are there for a purpose because the drawn out electrons are what they are asking you for. So the second part of it is not a contributor to the pi aromatic system. So all that is saying is in which of the following cases do the drawn out electrons not count as pi electrons in our system. So when we go through, in this first example, we have the lone pair on the nitrogen. So as always, we're gonna do sp2 versus sp3. We know that if it's sp3, the electrons don't count. If it's sp2, it does count. We also know that if it's sp3, it's gonna be non-aromatic. And we know, excuse me, I hiccuped. Uh, if we have sp2, we'll have two, four, six pi electrons. And that will be aromatic. So we know we choose sp2 and we choose aromatic. And that means that these electrons do count towards the pi system, yay. In the next example, uh, we have a double bonded nitrogen. As we already know, double bonded nitrogens will not count this lone pair because it is sp2 and only one electron counts. Therefore, this will not count. Next one up, it's an anion. You don't get a choice with an anion. The electrons are there. You have to use them. So they are used. In this next one, we have an oxygen in the ring. Uh, the plus charge is just there because it's also bonded to a hydrogen, so it has three bonds. The plus charge doesn't affect the sharing of the electrons. So just like every other time, we're gonna do sp2 versus sp3. If it's sp3, we know it'll be non-aromatic and it will not share the electrons. If it's sp2, it will share the electrons. If it's sp2, it will have two, four, six pi electrons. And we know that it will be aromatic. So aromatic is more stable. So these electrons are going to count towards the system. So we can tell after drawing all of these out that number two is the only one where the drawn unpaired our unshared pair of electrons are not contributing to the pi system. So B is our answer. So that pretty much covers all the aromaticity questions I wanted to do with you guys. All the other ones in this packet are just more of the same, but I want you guys to be able to get some more practice in there. So I will now be showing some more problems on the screen. And then I will also show their answers so that you can screenshot them blank and with the answers and you can practice on your own. So let's do that right now. Okay, so this question I actually really like because um, people think it's really complicated and confusing, but it's actually not too bad when you look at it. So basically, all it's asking is which one do you not expect to be aromatic? So we don't want aromatic, right? But now he's not giving you like structures. He's just giving you these names, right? And so basically, all you have to do is look at the number right here in these brackets. And so the number in these brackets uh, correlate to the number of pi electrons in the system. So we're looking for the one that does not fit the 4n plus 2 rule. Just to refresh our memory, we know that in order to be aromatic, it has to be 4n plus 2. And we know the numbers 2, 6, 10, 16, etc. are all going to follow that aromatic rule. For anti-aromatic, we want the 4n rule, which is just any multiple of, 10, of 4, excuse me. So 4, 8, 12, 16, etc. 
So in order to be non-aromatic, we know that any number besides these, so any odd number would actually um, be non-aromatic. So all we're gonna look for is for an answer choice that does not follow the 4n plus two rule. Six checks out, 14 checks out. If we continue this trend, uh, we would see that 18 and 22 also check out, but we automatically see that 16 is a multiple of four. So our answer will be 16 aniline. This is another question that I really like because um, people get tripped up because of the cyclopentadienyl anion. It's written out in word form, not uh, the structure is not given. So the cyclopentadienyl anion. So we know we have a cyclopentane, uh, like that's our base. And then we know we have a diene, so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw the diene. And I also know it's an anion, so we have a negative charge. And what they're asking for is how many different resonance structures can we draw of this molecule? So let's just go ahead and find that out. So first thing is first, when you're doing resonance, you're gonna start with the negative and you're gonna move around those electrons. So in our first resonance structure, we've created one new double bond and we've moved our lone pair here and we have not touched the second double bond. For the second resonance structure, these electrons are going to move one over, moving the double bond as well. So we end up with this guy. So at this point, we can move the negative charge again, and that will move our double bond over to the next carbon. So our negative, our, that, our next resonance structure looks like so. And please note that we are not back to our original structure yet. So usually um, people think once you go around the ring one time, you end up with what you started with. However, the negative charge is not where it was originally, it is next door. So we are going to keep going. We're going to knock those electrons over, move the double bond. And now we get this structure. Our negative charge will be in the bottom right corner, and we have our two double bonds present. And now when we do resonance once more, we make the double bond and we move those electrons. And at this point, we are going to go back to this guy. I'm not gonna redraw it just so it doesn't get confusing. So now we have drawn all of our possible resonance structures. And if we count that out, we get one, two, three, four, five possible resonance structures. And that will be your correct answer. Ta-da! So for this next one, we are kind of gonna put together our concepts from chapter 13 and from chapter 14. And we're going, we are going to look for the ring with the longest wavelength on UV spec. And so just as a reminder, longer wavelength equals more stable molecule. And we know that stability can be reached by having more double bonds in conjugation or by having aromaticity. So let's keep that in mind as we go through our answer choices. So rings one and three are going to be the, or are going to have the least number of double bonds in conjugation. And I just want you guys to keep in mind that one and three, as far as UV spec goes, are essentially equivalent. There's pretty much no difference because they each have three double bonds and they both contain a benzene. This chain of carbons pretty much not gonna count for anything. So we're gonna get rid of both of these answer choices. And then we can see that this has more double bonds um, it has two sets of double bonds in conjugation. So there's three and three. So we're going to leave that on the side for a second. And we're going to look at this compound. 
and this compound. So we are going to check and see if they are aromatic because we can see that they are both fully conjugated, whereas this guy is not. So we can start with this last one. It's cyclic, planar, fully conjugated, and it has one, two, three, four, five double bonds. So that would mean it has 10 pi electrons. So this guy is aromatic. And then over here, we have two, four, six, seven double bonds. So that would mean 14 pi electrons. And 14 pi electrons follows the aromatic rule, the four and plus two rule. So this guy is also aromatic. This is some good practice for you guys. So we can, first of all, tell that number two has the most double bonds in conjugation. And in addition, we also said that it was aromatic, so it has even more stability. So for those two reasons, we know that B is going to be the most stable compound, AKA it will have the longest wavelength in the UV-Vis spec region.